I'm Azri Nock, this is XGA Developer TV, and you don't know it, but I moved to Fargo. Let the really stupid accent jokes commence. Oh yeah? You betcha. <laughs> Whenever new phones are being or are about to be announced, I always come across a bunch of articles about how OEM should stick with whatever comes with AOSP. And then, right on cue, more articles come out about fragmentation, about how Google is planning to reel in all the OEMs and get them to stop using skins, speculations of some sort where you can pick between AOSP and Sense or TouchWiz or whatever. And this is complete crap. It's inane and stupid. Maybe you believe in skins. Maybe you're in a skinnest, but you don't know why, so here goes. Myth number one, OEM skins. There's no such thing. I'm an A skinnest. There are themes, and those could be skins, but Sense is a completely new version of Android. TouchWiz, a completely new version of Android. It doesn't just add or even change system components, but replaces them with entirely new systems, like an update system or new partitions. Look at HBoot, that's part of the Sense version of Android, or download mode on TouchWiz. Sure, they're not base versions of Android, but they're no more a skin of Android than Android is a skin of Linux. It's its own thing. I think the idea of skins comes from the days of Windows Mobile, where Sense was a skin. It's different with Android, and that's because of life but I'll get to that. So, myth number two. Choosing between an OEM version of Android and AOSP. In order to allow someone to choose between Sense and AOSP on startup would require a dual boot. HTC already used AOSP on a non-Nexus phone, and from that they built up their own proprietary version of Android. Therefore, it's about as likely that a company like HTC would create a phone that dual boots Sense and AOSP as creating a phone that dual boots Sense and Windows Phone 8. That is, if licensing wasn't an issue, but we'll get to that. So myth number three, Android is open source. That's true as far as the Android open source project is concerned, but everywhere else it's not. The kernel is licensed under the GPL because Linux is licensed under the GPL, but the rest of Android is licensed under the Apache license, which means it's free for use, and as soon as you use it, that use is your property. Like some people complain about my UI not being open. It doesn't have to be. They own that code. The Cyanogen team chose to make Cyanogen mod continue the Apache license. You can do whatever you want with it, you own it, and you can make it as open or as closed and proprietary as you want. Now, it's more open than, say, Windows Mobile or Windows Phone. Windows Mobile, you could skin but you couldn't change the source code. Windows Phone, you can't even do that. With Android, you can change the source code to whatever you want. So it's not a skin. And there are often some fairly fundamental changes to the Android system framework. This brings us to myth number four. AOSP is how Android is supposed to be, or how Google intended it. AOSP is just a base. Google wants you to take it and make it proprietary, whatever serves you, with no obligations to the open source community. This is actually the key to Android's success. Way back in the day, when a company made a computer, they made an operating system to go with it. Apple was a part of that. Most were shoddy, and you always wanted capabilities and features and programs that other operating systems had. And that situation is like having your cake. Then Microsoft came along and unified computers with a single operating system. But Windows is proprietary to Microsoft, not computer manufacturers. So that's like eating the cake. Android is completely revolutionary because it unifies devices under a single operating system, but also gives ownership and licensing rights back to the manufacturers so they can have their cake and eat it too. And that should make the next one pretty obvious. Myth number five, Google is unhappy with OEM versions of Android. Nope. There is only one thing that they keep tight control over, and those are compatibility standards for displaying and running apps. If you are compatible and approved, you can include Google Play and all of the Google apps in your proprietary ROM. Now that's not something you can go and get. Google doesn't even work with the OEMs on that. They work directly with the ODMs, like Foxconn, the places where phones are actually manufactured. This is why Google apps aren't included directly in ROMs like CyanogenMod. So if Google apps aren't going to be included in your version of Android, you have no obligation whatsoever to make Android work a certain way. I remember way back when Google released Ice Cream Sandwich and announced that the Holo theme must be included in Android, and there was this big hoopla, whatever that means, that Google was finally forcing OEMs to make Android look like AOSP, or offer the choice of theme. But this had nothing to do with OEMs. The theme is included in Android to allow uniformity in app design. Apps call on system themes too. If you don't have the Holo theme available in your ROM, you're not compatible. The content on Google Play is where Google is really focused. It's their payoff. In fact, if you haven't seen it, they have poured resources into educating app developers and designers on the Android developers 
Google Plus page. Lots of videos and articles and interactive seminars. It's very worth checking out. Hopefully that little rundown on the Android blogosphere will cool down the speculations. So again, I'm Azri Doc, and this is XTA Developer TV. Ha 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 ha!